Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome back to Jamie Photography. So in this video, we're going to go back to a little bit more of my traditional day to night. I do enjoy it very much, as you know, and uh, we're going to uh, take uh, this beautiful uh, little Italian restaurant, uh, Osteria La Paratata, and uh, it's in the uh, Siena region of Italy. It's a beautiful place. And uh, we had a great meal there that evening. And I thought, well, you know, it was early evening when we arrived. And uh, so this was the picture I actually shot. And uh, if you want to follow along, this this raw image will be uh, available in a link down below. Feel free to download and uh, follow along with me. Uh, all I ask is you respect my copyrights. Should you wish to share it on uh, social media once you've processed it, just please give uh, give reference to myself, uh, Jamie R. Maffley, and that would be much much appreciated. So yeah, we we took this this image a nice evening there. Some of the lights are on. Some of the lights are not on. So what we're going to try to do today is show you how we balance lights that are on already and uh, adding the new lights in. So we, we get the this sort of traditional day to night effect. So uh, I hope you do enjoy the video. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, it'd be great for you to join me on this adventure here on YouTube. Still having a great time. So please feel free to do that. And if you do enjoy the video, obviously, please uh, click like and uh, and as always, I welcome your comments and questions and any tips that you might have. Um, just before we go into the video, um, if you've got time, please uh, just take a moment to uh, to go and have a look at uh, at my website, uh, jrmafflin.uk. Uh, you can find out a little bit about me here, uh, what gear I shoot with, and uh, you know what I do for a living, all that sort of stuff. Also, there's a contact area here, so if you've got any any messages or points you'd like to raise me outside of the the videos you're always welcome to contact me there um i do i do have sky packs available currently just a, a night sky pack and i will talk a little bit in this video about that sky pack so feel free to have a look at those as well um and i've also got some workshops uh, running at the moment uh for this year so london is going to be really good this year london uh, we had a great time last year we, we had some guests together made some good friends we enjoyed ourselves so seven nights you can get more information just by clicking on it there. Paris also, 8th of June. And then uh, I'm, I'm still in the process of planning for the 12th of September. Might be the 19th of September. We're just working on this at the moment. Ten nights look, going from London through Winchester and Salisbury up to Stonehenge for a, a sunrise, which will be awesome, and then down to Bath. So a ten nights uh, trip and uh, looking forward to that as well. So if you do come with me, it's all inclusive. The, the prices are, are included here, but that includes your hotel, all your food um, for the breakfast and the evening meals. It also includes all your transport once you've uh, got to uh, got to the workshop. So uh, please have a look at that. If you've got any questions, feel free to, uh, to give me a shout. Anyway, we will get back to the video. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is... Uh, as I normally do in my workflow, is I'm just going to go down to denoise and I'm going to denoise the image. Now, you don't have to do this. Um, it's quite a high megapixel image anyway, so it's not too much of a problem, particularly if the machine's not fast enough to, to do denoise in a sensible time. But I'm just going to run that here now um, so that it gives us you know the best quality that we can, we can possibly get from the image. Even though it was shot at ISO 200, uh, the denoise does really... Uh, reduce the amount of noise that there is particularly in the shadows so okay that's done so so now it's changed into an enhanced noise re reduction uh, dng which is what we want the next thing i'm going to do is we're going to look at the uh, perspective here so i'm just going to go down to transform now you could just click auto and that will give us a nice straight line there a nice straight line there so actually auto works quite well so i, I don't need to do any more sometimes you can use guided um, and then you can you can draw your your sort of vertical and horizontal lines in to get the perfect perspective. Right now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to alter the contrast ever so slightly and the highlights and the shadows. So I'm just going to bring bring the highlights down just slightly, not a lot, just a little bit. I'm going to just raise the contrast a little bit, but I'm going to open up the shadows. Right, and what this does is as we go over into Photoshop to do a sky replacement because we've just got a, a boring grey sky here. Um, we've now got a really defined edge 
that that will show. In fact, I could probably add just a little bit more contrast to this this image, and that will give us a really hard edge, um, so that the 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 sky replacement will work very very well. So let's do that. Let's right click on the image. Let's edit in. Let's go over into Adobe Photoshop. Now I still use the beta version, but uh, it doesn't matter because the difference between Adobe Photoshop 2024 and the beta edition currently is relatively small. I do find that there's a slight advantage for using the beta version in regards to generative fill function, but on the whole, it, it, it's very, very similar. So, um, and it's telling me there, there's a new, even newer version of the beta available. So I will do that later. Okay, so now we're in, now we're in uh, Photoshop. What we can do is we're just gonna make it fit screen. There we go. So we've just got a single layer, just got this background layer, which is the image itself. We're gonna go to edit. And in edit, we're going to go to sky replacement. So the sky replacement module built into Photoshop is 90% of the time extremely good uh, at what it does. So now it's just going to load up whatever my last sky was. In this case, it was a night sky. I don't want to put a night sky on this one. I, I want to put uh, uh, more of a sort of sunset sort of style sky. So um, now I do have my own uh, sky packs. Uh, available at the moment I've only got the night the night pack available um, and if I just press plus here I can go in and I can show you the sort of uh, night pack images that we have so I'll just start at the top here and I'll press the space bar I'm on a Mac and you can see I can just go through and show you the quality of the images that I have available now they're available in two 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 sets you can purchase them for a lower price in JPEG which uh, which these ones are here, where I've already processed the images, and uh, they're all somewhere between forty five and sixty megapixels, and uh, and I've also got a separate set, a little bit more expensive, not not too much, which is um, the raw images saved as as uh, DNGs, and there you'll be able to do your own um, processing of the images should you wish. Um, so these images are taken uh, in a number of places, the United Kingdom. Um, in North America, up in the uh, up in the Sierra Nevadas, and also down in South Africa, out in the bush. Uh, this particular image here is is from there, so it's a Southern Hemisphere image, as you can see. So really, really beautiful skies. So if you do want to uh, purchase those, you can pop over to my um, website, which is jrmathlin.uk, and uh, have a look. So I'm just going to go into sunsets here. And uh, that's quite a nice sunset. I'm going to go with that one. So that's number two. So I'm just going to say open. And it's going to load that sky in. There it is. And then I can click on it in the module there. And it will, it will apply it up above. So now to come out of this, sometimes people just click OK or cancel. But that actually cancels the whole sky replacement replacement module. What, we do, what I normally do is just click on this little gray spray space here, which takes us back to the control functions. Now, one of the good tricks you can have here is using this little tick box here to flip left to right. So if I click that, we can have, uh, you know, the darker side of the sky, or if I click back, we can have the lighter side of the sky. So I quite like that. Um, now you've got a number of sliders that do a number of things. Shift edge looks at the, the contrast between the sky and the foreground. And uh, you can see here that this this sort of raised bricked area on the building is actually being affected by the cloud. And if I if I move this further to the right, it will come more into the foreground. And if I go further to the left, it will go less. But what it does do, the less you have, the more of a halo effect that you get. So you have to try to find the balance point between the two. So if I bring that down to around about here, I think we could probably go around about there. Now the fade edge, if you go completely left on the fade edge, you can see that it, it, it controls that, that halo. If I go all the way to the right, you'll see there'll be more halo again. So you actually want to try to reduce the halo effect as much as possible. So I'm gonna move that over uh, to the right, but there is a little bit of bleed over up, up there. So I'm just gonna move this one a little bit more to the left as well. And just find that balance point where, where it works. You see it's coming in onto the onto the building there. Now there are things we can do with that, and I can show you that in a second. So I'm gonna go about there, but we will need to deal with this. Um, I'm gonna leave the fade edge completely over to the left. 
I'm going to darken the sky down a little bit so we we that's brighten it and that's darken it so I'm just going to just bring it down a little bit not too much because I like to keep this this highlight effect we've got going on here and also I'm just going to increase the color slightly as well so we just come up on the color to the right now the scale this affects how big this is so I could I can actually make it smaller and as you can see the image is a lot smaller now but of course we'll we'll need to find where we can put it in here and you can you can move it around just by grabbing it and moving it around and I, I could I could put it probably I would say somewhere around around there I think works quite well then we've also got um, the the sort of bottom adjustments here now there are there are two modes you can use you can use multiply which is what we're on at the moment let's move this over here and we've also got screen and if I click screen you can see that the screen blends the foreground differently whereas the multiply blends the the background into the foreground better so I'm going to stick with multiply I'm going to go with the foreground lighting here if you move it all the way to the left you'll see it brightens up the foreground and if we move it all the way to the right it will darken down the foreground so I tend to want it down towards the bottom edge lighting similar sort of thing you can see along this edge here there's a little bit of a halo there if we move that to the right we can reduce that um, we've still got a bit of bleed over here and we'll we'll deal with that and then the color adjustment takes the color of the sky and applies it to the foreground so if I bring this to the right you'll see you'll get that color hue that the sky would cast in fact I'm going to go even further I'm going to go over here now let's deal with let's deal with this this sort of bleed over here how we deal with that is we have a, a refine tool here and you can you can see it here you can just click on there and um, what we can do is that gives us a brush now I can make that brush bigger here we go and I can also zoom in so let me just go to the, the magnifying glass here and just zoom in on this area where we have this problem there we go so I'm just going to move that out of the way so using the refine tool I've got it there so I can I can just if I click as it stands it will add more if I hold down the option or alt key I can remove it so I can just go over it a few times and I can click and remove and just take out that sky from from the background there so you can see I'm just clicking taking the worst of it out you know a little bit of color blend blended over doesn't look too bad so I'm just gonna make the brush a little bit smaller I'm gonna go in on this on this gutter here so I'm just gonna make it the size of the gutter there we go I'm gonna click once there we go I'm gonna click there and then I'm gonna hold down the shift key and I'm going to come further up so I'm going to go to there first so I hold down the shift key and that means I can draw a straight line with my brush so I'm just just going to go backwards and forwards there a few times and I'm still down holding down the option and the alt key I'm going to make the brush a little bit bigger still holding down the option or alt key and I can just make sure that we've not got any of that color bleed over now same on this edge here I'm going to take a Gonna holding down the optional key remember to keep that down so it shows a negative in the middle of the circle and I'm just going to go down to there hold down the shift key and just draw that straight line edge along there so I'm just going up and down a few times just to just to take that out and I can paint this bit out here there we go so I'm just going to hold down the space bar now and move across so I can just see the rest of the gutter run here and I'm just going to uh, make my brush slightly bigger now because we're inside this area I'm going to hold down the option alt key same again click shift still hold down the option alt key shift click and just go backwards and forwards a few times there just to find that color balance so and it just brings that up so I'm just still holding down the option alt key to keep reminding that you can see here this is this is all bled through this little sort of dove dove house on the top there so I'm just going to uh, just click in there make my brush a little bit smaller so I get a bit more detail holding down the option or alt key and I'm just going to go over that there there we go I'm just going to go up into there a little bit smaller holding down the option or alt key and uh, I can just go back and forth there just to find that sort of edge line and make it work better there we go and as you can see that's now not got the sky uh, bled into it so you could argue that we need a little bit along here so I'm just going to go in here as well there we go just bringing that along 
So that works quite well. That's how you, you take that edge away. Sometimes it's better to have quite an abrupt um, edge and then you can you can find it. You see here, there's just a little bit of a sort of halo in the center there. Well, what we can do is we can do the opposite. We can take a slightly larger brush. Don't hold down the optional alt key, leave it as a positive and then click on that area there, look. And then we can paint. As long as you keep the, the positive on the sky, we can paint the sky in so it's got a much harder edge. See that? We got it nice and tight in there. Same out here. I can click on that, just run over the top there and just harden that edge up. In with the tree, just stay on the sky. And what you can do there, hold down the space bar and just move it across. And we can just find those those edges to the between the, the tree and the, and the sky. So I'm just going around that edge there, holding down the space bar again, you know, and you can you can literally just find that edge using the refine tool. It's a very good way. I mean, it's pretty good up here, to be honest. I don't really need to do much with that. Um, so I'm just going to go back over here. And I think that's OK. So holding down the optional alt key here, I can go in on this chimney on these bells, sorry. And we can just hold down the shift key at the same time as the optional alt key and just keep going backwards and forwards there. And we can just tidy that, tidy that up, take the sky out. So that's how you deal with uh, the sky when it, it sort of blows over into, into the, uh, into the image itself. It's a, it's, it's a very, very powerful tool, the refine tool, and it's very, very useful. So when you hold down the option or alt key there, you get, the negative, and if you don't hold it down, it's a positive, so it adds instead of removes. So I'm just, just going to take that edge there. I think the roof here might need just a little bit, so I'm going to take a nice big brush now, so I can just go across here. So holding down the optional Alt key, you can see there, can you see that we're just removing that bleed over that we had? And uh, and as I say, a little bit is always, is always good, because it just sort of balances the colours between the different scenes. But uh, but I'm I'm happy with that. So I'm just going to zoom back out. So we'll go to the zoom tool there. Press down the optional Alt key to make it a minus, and we can just drop back. I think we need to just do a little bit up here. So I'm going to go back to the refine tool. I'm going to make it a positive, and just come in here on the positive. There we go. And you can just sort of paint round. As long as you start on the sky with the positive, you'll get the effect that you want. So that's actually. A pretty good sky replacement. So once you're done and you're happy with it, um, just go down to the layers here and you can click two outputs. You can click a new layer or you can do duplicate layer. Well new layer will give you all the layers for all the different elements of the sky replacement and then you can continue to adjust them as you please including uh, different masks um, as Photoshop has decided to use. But what I prefer to do is just use the duplicate layer and when I click OK it will just give me one extra layer so this is now the top layer. So let's just go back to fit screen. So that's that's the top layer. As you can see here, it's top layer. If I turn the top layer off, turn the little eye symbol off, then it's the, the layer below, which is the original layer that we had. So, so you can turn that on or off. So happy with that. I'm going to delete the background layer that I don't need because I don't want to make the file overly large. Saving uh, with multiple layers over is is very useful if you want to go back and change things later but it does make the file rather large you know and i've heard stories of people that have, have moved these files back from photoshop with five six seven layers open and their file size can be many many hundreds of uh, of megabytes in, in fact sometimes even gigabytes and unless you have a very powerful computer with lots of ram it will slow your computer down so it, it's a good idea to remove stuff that you don't want to uh, to take back to lightroom uh, that will keep the file size down, give your computer a good chance to uh, to stay ahead of the game. So there we go. We've selected that, that background layer. I'm just going to go to delete layer. So we've just got the single layer now. Now, normally whilst I'm in, in Photoshop, I will do any little tidying up if there's any uh, rubbish or garbage or, or things in the shot that I'm not particularly happy about. Now, there's a waste paper basket on the wall here. I probably, a, a garbage bin here. I'm probably going to get rid of that. Um, and I'm just going to take this sign, the, the edge of this sign out as well, because it's on the edge edge of the image. And uh, although I'm going to recrop and I'm just trying to look where I'm going to recrop to, I think I want to take that out. Now, to remove that, 
um, and, and here. You could use the remove tool. It's very, very good uh, for doing things like this. And you can also use generative fill. So I'm, I'll do one of each so that you can see what we're doing. So let's just zoom in on this, 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 this sort of garbage bin here. I'm going to go to the, uh, the, the remove tool here which is under the spot healing brush tool. So press J on your keyboard, we'll select it, and then you can select the remove tool. Once you've got remove tool, take a reasonable size brush, not too big, because we don't want to overlap too much. And then we just want to keep a sort of 25%, 30% of the, of the brush outside of the, um, of the object that you're trying to remove. So I'm just going to come down here. Now there is a bit of a shadow there, so I'm just going down to pick up that shadow. Now when you've come all the way around, you don't have to fill in the center. If you just let go, it will fill it in for you. And then the remove tool will, will remove it. And it's just left another mark there. I'm just going to remove that, so that's fine. So now cables here. I'm not a big fan of cables just sat on the wall, some sort of telecommunications here. But So we'll do the same thing here. We're just going to going to cover that up. I'm going to leave the cable run for a second. So that's done. I'm just going to make the brush smaller for the cable run so we're not, you know, changing things unnecessarily. And then just take the cable out there and we'll also take the cable out here. Just come around there. That's fine. So that's that's much better. Now let's just go down and have a look. I did see a little bit of wire, wispy wire here sticking out. So I'm just going to just going to take that, maybe a twig or something, just going to take that out as well. So it will remove that. Now the remove tool is, is phenomenal. I do remember before generative fill appeared and we had the remove tool as, as the new tool to play with, we were, we were so amazed uh, with what the remove tool could do. And then came along generative fill and, uh, and, and took it to a whole nother level, really, which I'll, I'll show you in a moment. So just going to take out a couple of little bits and pieces down here. There's a leaf and things there, so just, just a little bit of tidying up. Right, so let's take out this, this sign. So to do that, I'm going to select, I'm going to go up here to the um, the lasso tool, and if you right-click on the lasso tool, you get the freehand lasso tool, and you get a polygonal uh, tool, which is very useful for doing straight lines. So if I start just off the image above the sign there and click once, I can then draw a straight line all the way down here, click again and just basically draw around draw around the sign so it's just going to come back along there and then join them back up and there's your selection okay so we just made a selection nothing more when you do so you get this little panel comes out which gives you your generative fill uh, option and it also gives you some options in relation to your selection so I'm going to click generative fill I'm not going to type anything in the box because if you just click generate, it will see it as a removal. So I'm going to click generate and it's going to take the data. It's going to send it off through the internet to Adobe servers and uh, it's going to process the image with Adobe and then it's going to send the correction back. And there we go. So I'm just going to move that down out of the way a little bit. So that's the option it's given us. And it, isn't it just amazing? I have to say, you know, it takes that sign out, puts all the uh, stones back in. Option one, option two, option three. I like option one with the plants. I'm going to leave that in there. I'm not too worried about the light here because we're going to crop slightly on, on this shot. So I'm going to just zoom back. Happy with that. So um, I'm going to leave this little sign in because I think it gives a bit of character to the restaurant here. A uh, wonderful little restaurant. We had a lovely meal there. Um, so um, if you're ever down in Italy and you're, you're down in the... Uh, in the uh, And you're down in the Siena region of Italy. Um, take, take take a trip over here. There's some really interesting things around here as well. There's an old quarry not far away, which is uh, really interesting. And there's like this sort of aqua coloured water that runs down through the rocks. It's it's beautiful. So definitely worth. I would recommend a visit. So I'm just going to go back to the remove tool here. Now you notice that there's a little no entry sign that comes up when I've clicked on the remove tool this time, and that's because we're in the generative field layer. If I go back to the background layer, it it comes back to life, so I can I can actually still use the remove tool uh, to do that. It's just that 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 layer that we have is only the small area over over the, the side here where we dealt with the sign that the, that it would deal with it. So I'm just going to look down the end here. Is there anything we need to do to just just have a little bit of a tidy up down here? 
Got some nice lights which we're going to use to create our day to night. I'm not too worried about that little cable. It's quite a long way away. I'm just going to take the, the chap over here who's only half in the shot. I'm just going to highlight him and take him out of the shot. There we go. And uh, anything else over here that we need to remove? I don't think so. No, I'm quite happy. There's a speaker on the wall. I'm just going to take that speaker off the wall there. So um, it keeps it quite authentic. Now there is an aerial, there is an aerial here. So I'm wondering if if uh, the remove tool is going to be capable of, of con yep, look at that, amazing. So I'm just going to make the brush smaller and then we're just going to go in on the specific aerial here. And then I'll just do the cross wires with a smaller, a smaller brush still. So we're just going to come across there and we're just going to come across there. That's a tie rod that holds that holds the tower up. So I'm going to leave that in for now. So we've removed the aerial. That's pretty good. You know what? I do, yeah, let's take the cable out. Whilst we're here, no messing around. There's the uh, using the remove tool, which is which is a phenomenal tool. I still absolutely amazes me every time I use uh, Photoshop on just how good the tools that they provide for us really are and, and what we're capable of doing. So that was a much longer run there. So just had to compute just for a moment just to find the solution for us. Right, I'm going to zoom back out. I'm happy with that. I think we've done all the changes we need to do there. I'm going to send this back to uh, to, to to Lightroom. So we're going to do that by clicking on uh, File, Close, and then Save. And people say, well, why don't you just go to Save or Save As? Well, I don't actually want Photoshop open anymore. I've, I've used it for what I wanted. Um, just before I do, actually, I'm just going to combine these two layers down as I said earlier, it's best to have the minimum number. So I've just highlighted, you can highlight any one of these layers, right click, and then you can just merge visible and it will bring them together. So yeah, as I say, I don't want it in Photoshop anymore. So I'm clicking close and then I'm clicking save and that will close it in, in Photoshop, releasing the memory that we were talking about early earlier um, to help the um, computer um, deal with it. And then I'm just going back over into Lightroom here. So we've got the image back. So um, we can now do our sort of final edit. So what I'm first thing I'm going to do is go to the crop tool. And like I said earlier, I just want to crop this. I'm just going to come along that edge of that building line there. And uh, I'm just going to bring this up slightly from the bottom. Not too much. I want a little bit of space underneath here for the light. And I'm going to bring the top down roughly to about sort of here and then We'll go over to the, um, the the padlock here. Make sure the padlock's unlocked and then click on custom and then you can f pick your, fa your your standard sort of ratios here. So I think a 1610 could work here. Uh, maybe even a 169, a standard ratio. So I'm just going to bring that back up a little bit there and bring this back down. No, nope, I'm going to go with 1610. I'm going to pop it in there at 1610. I'm just going to make sure we've got what we want round here. And uh, this stone, this sort of edge over here is sort of troubling me just a little bit. So I'm, I might just bring that down and take the stone out of the shot. Just take to the edge of that building there. Um, yeah, I'm happy with that. I'm just going to hit return. So that's now our crop. Yeah, that's very good. OK, so what do we do day to night? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is going to drop the whole exposure down by around about sort of, I'd say 1.75 stops. There we go, uh, a little bit darker. I'm going to um, open up the highlights just a little bit, just so that the sky is still popping. Not a lot, not too much, because we can deal with that separately. And I'm just going to open up the shadows just a little bit as well. And uh, now what we need to do is relight the scene with the lamps being switched on and uh, making these lamps look a little bit more authentic. And we can do that by going into masks and we're going to go to my favorite tool of all, which is a radial gradient. And we can just pop a small radial gradient over this lamp here like this and just bring up the exposure. There's one. Now I can right click on that, right click, and I can duplicate the mask. Don't duplicate the radial gradient because if you do that, whenever you alter one radial gradient, they all change at the same. And uh, I think I've said before in my videos, the further away an object is, the less light you receive at the camera. So effectively, you have to alter them all separately. So to do that, duplicate the mask. That way you are able to 
make copies and alter them. So I can now alter this one. So I'm gonna actually make this one a little bit brighter. So you get that brightness coming out of the lamp. And I'll go back to this one and I can alter this one separately as well, you see. And that, that's important to do that. So this light needs one as well. So let's see if we can take this one, right click, duplicate the mask again. So we've made a copy of that. I'm gonna put it on that lamp and I'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger. So you get a bit of a glow around the area. Uh, I'm just gonna add a little bit of clarity to that one um, because that will just make it pop. There we go. There's a little light hiding down there. So same thing, right click, duplicate the mask, move that down there and uh, that will just light up the area. Now you'll notice this light and this light, they're creating a bit of light here on the path. And these lights would also create some light around here as well. So what we're gonna do is gonna right click again, duplicate the mask again, and we're gonna put underneath here, we're gonna put this down here on this one, and we're just gonna pull it out a little bit bigger. And as though we're getting a bit of light, that's just sort of coming, find the right shape. I'm just gonna alter it, just turn it slightly, there we go. So it's as though there's light coming down from above. Now, this needs to be a bit more orange because these lamps are quite orange. So whilst I'm on this one, I can go back up to the temp in the color and just add a bit more, add a little bit more temp to it. So it's a bit harsh, the line is a bit harsh. So what we can do is we can uh, make sure that the filter's at 100%. And we can also go to the, um, the sort of amount slider that you get as well. And you can just, bring that up or down look just to, to find where you're getting a nice balance of light. I still think there's a little bit too much up here. So I'm going to subtract from this, this particular radial gradient, a brush. That brush is gonna have relatively low flow, 100% feather, and it's a negative. So I'm just gonna wash that over there a little bit and just reduce that amount of light above it. So it looks quite natural then. Um, I'm gonna do the same over here. So we're gonna take this take this one we're going to take the, du the duplication of this mask and we're going to pull it over here underneath this one as you can see let's pull it out a little bit now that's the same brightness as this one yeah it looks much brighter but that was because it's on a black sign here so we're just going to go to the amount slider here again and just back that off a little bit so we've just got subtle light coming in that area a, a big mistake i see people making is is they tend to have the light very bold like this and uh, it doesn't look very natural because that light's not gonna produce that much light on the ground. So try to, be, try to be gentle when you're putting light in and try to be subtle. I think that's the important thing and just sort of find a subtle level. Now this light and this light are casting, casting a, a deeper color here. So let's go back and create another radial gradient. And this time we're gonna pull a little vertical one in here that starts here. See that? I'm just gonna brighten that up slightly. There we go, not too much. And I'm gonna bring up the color, again, not too much. Now, you get this orangey, greeny orange. So to balance that off, you need to bring up some magenta with the tint, and then you can get the real deeper orange colors. So that's still too bright. So let's go to the amount slider and just back it off slightly. And there you go, you get this sort of effect coming off there. Perhaps we want to make this light a little bit more orange. So bring up the color, bring up the magenta, and just make that one a little bit more orange as well. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Let's just come out the mask for a second and see if that's looking relatively authentic. I think this one's still a bit too bright over here. So go back into masks. We'll select that one. There we go. Just make sure we selected. And we're just gonna back that off just a little bit. So it's not too, not too much. There we go, so it's subtle. Good, right, lanterns. I love lanterns. Here's a beautiful lantern up here we're going to light this one. So we're gonna do the same thing, create a mask, take the radial gradient here, gonna make it just slightly bigger than the lamp itself, just slightly bigger. We're gonna push the exposure all the way up to the top, 100%, there we go, four stops. I'm gonna add in a bit of color, and a little bit of magenta to balance it off. Now we're gonna zoom in, we're gonna zoom in on that, we're gonna go at 200%, I'm gonna hold down the space bar to move up to that, there we go. And now we're going to brush away the light that we don't want because the light on the wall behind there is not authentic. The light from this lamp would be lighting the wall here, not over there. So what we do is we subtract from this radial gradient a brush. We put the feather all the way down to zero and put the flow all the way up. So whatever we do is a big removal. End of story, we're, we're removing that, uh, 
radial gradient. So we're going to go in on the edge of the frame there. We're going to click once. We're going to hold down the shift and then click again. So we can do click, shift, click. So we're taking away the extra light that we, we've called for by clicking once, holding down the shift and clicking again. Now the, the bottom of this lamp would be illuminated. So when we go across the bottom here, we need to go across here and we need to come up here. So that, that would be the illuminated area. So as you can see, what we've done is re we've removed the radial gradient directly around the lamp. It's, uh, it's my style for doing day to night. I love doing this. It's, it's great, great fun. So I'm just going to take a bigger brush. I'm using the square brackets to the left of the return key just to make the bracket bigger. And then I'm just going to take the rest of it out. Now, if you make a mistake and you go over the lamp by mistake, oh, dearie me, you think, oh, well, well all you need to do is command or control Z to undo your last brush stroke. And then you can carry on around. So there we go. We've, we've illuminated that lamp. I'm just going to pop in another radial gradient in the center. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to duplicate the mask. Okay, now this looks crazy, right? So what we're going to do with the duplicated mask is we're going to make it smaller, much smaller. And it will be the size of the lamp that will be inside the, the light fitting. So that, that's a bit too bright. So I'm just going to turn that down just a little bit. So you've got the effect of the lamp in the center there. Now, if we just zoom back and have a look at that, you'll see that that looks come out of masks. You'll see that looks quite authentic. However, we need to light the wall up, right? Now, it's important that we, we look at how, how this light comes from this lantern. So we need to put some light on the wall here. So I'm going to go back into, um, into the masks. I'm going to create another radial gradient, and I'm going to put the gradient, quite big gradient like this, and I'm going to put where that lamp, look, that lamp comes across to the wall here, right? So that's where the brightness will be. And I'm going to spread it out along the wall a little bit. Now, don't worry, we're going to illuminate this a little bit more by having this here, but I'll show you how we'll deal with that. So we've moved it out there. So now we're going to go to the exposure slider and we're going to bring up the exposure on the wall there. Now, remember, subtle. Don't put too much in. I'm going to add some color to match the color. Not too much. Add in that magenta just to balance that color off. That's good. Now, really important, this light is to the right of this corner, which means this is going to be in shadow. Really, really important. So what we need to do is subtract a brush, and that brush can be 100% flow and zero feather, really hard edge, and we can literally go up the top here. I don't make the brush too big. Let's come in here with a slightly smaller brush. We're gonna come up the top here, click on the edge there, and then go all the way down the bottom here, hold down the shift so we get a nice straight line, and we'll click on it again, and that creates that creates that hard edge because if you look at the if you actually just look at the uh, the mask and I hover over the mask here you can see that it's a little bit at the top there I'm just going to take that out as well you can see the mask is has a hard edge so is this too bright up here now maybe what we'll do is we'll go back to the uh, initial um, initial mask that we made for the lantern itself mask three there it is and what we can do is we can back the exposure off just slightly there we go so you can make it look more or less authentic it's, if you don't want it too bright you know it's not really bright street lights you could you can turn it back but because you've got that lamp in the center it looks very authentic now i've dimmed that down quite a bit so i'm just going to click on this one and dim this one down as well so we don't have too much light coming out of the light fitting there we go remember subtle is the name of the game now, the last thing I'm going to say with this particular radial gradient is that this lantern has a hood and that hood is going to cast a shadow upwards. So I'm just going to click on here again. I'm going to go back in and I'm going to select another subtract brush. But this time I'm going to have 100% feather and I'm going to have about 40% flow and I'm going to make the brush smaller. And I'm just going to brush down gently from above to create a dark area just above. So you get the effect of the, the hood casting a shadow all right now we need to bring this light down and onto the ground i need a little bit more light below here so whilst we're still in this mask mask number four i'm going to add a brush this time i'm going to make sure the feathers at 100 percent and the flow is relatively low around about 40 percent and uh, i'm going to take reasonable size brush and i'm just going to brush down just a little bit from there so you can see that we, we've got the light now coming down the wall. So that looks pretty good. I'm just going to go back to the lantern there. 
and I'm just going to go, which was my mask number three, and I'm just going to brighten that lantern up just a little bit, just to balance it off. Very good. So there's some other places that light needs to be. So let's go back to four. Let's take the add brush that we had, brush number three, and this light's going to cast some light on this tree, right? You, you, you've got to look around to see where the light goes. So I'm going to take a small brush here, and I'm just going to wash down that that the front of that uh, tree trunk just there same here just going to add in a bit of light there as well so we just got a little bit of light coming through and i'm going to put a little bit on the leaves as well so i'm just going to make this a little bit bigger and i'm just going to touch just touch those over so we've got a little bit of light coming through onto the onto the tree trunk so that's working well as well so the ground now, either we could use the brush and the brush that we've got here and we could paint ourselves in a little bit of light. That works quite well as such. Or we could take a radial, we could take a radial gradient. So if I just control Z that, um, I can then, uh, or command Z on a Mac, what I can now do is I can create another radial gradient. I can draw one out at the bottom, turn the angle so it represents this angle. Can you see this angle's coming out here? You need to represent that angle, not be flat or square. And the light needs to be directly below the light. And you can see that the distance from the edge of the wall there to that bracket. So if you come down here, that's here. And then you have to come out at the same angle to where the lamp, the lamp is. So where my little hand is here, that is the, where the light's actually centered. So put your radial on that point, right? I'm just gonna pull that right out, just make a quite a big area with this. And then I'm just gonna bring up the exposure here we go. Add in a little bit of color to match that color. A little bit of magenta, as always, just to balance it off. There we go. Now, to make this pop, we need clarity. So I'm just going to go down to clarity here and just add in a little bit of clarity. And you'll see the street, all the stonework just sort of lights up. You can put more in if you want to, but I tend, tend to go about 30, 40% roughly. Now, we don't want this area lit up over here, and we really don't want the wall lit up too much there. So whilst we're in this mask, we can subtract a brush. We can leave the um, the flow about 50% and the feather at 100%. It's very really important that we have that feather to give us a nice feathered off edge. And I'm just going to just paint that away. I'm just going to go over that again. So it's like it's like using a palette with brushes and, and oil paints. I find it, it, we are able to just play around with the uh, play around with the the colours and the lights. I'm just going to go back in there. I'm just going to add in a brush, um, low flow. Still got that. I just want a little bit more light in this area here, just underneath the lantern. There we go. That's great. Right. It's right over there as well. Okay. So we've got another one down here to do. So let's jump down. Let's jump down to that. I'm going to zoom in on that one. Use the space bar to move across. We've got two down here. So same thing again. So we're going to go into radial gradient. I'm going to take a radial gradient, a little bit bigger than the lamp itself. Place the center there. Brighten it up. Add in that little bit of color and a little bit of magenta to balance the colors off. There we go. And then we're going to subtract a brush. This time, remember, we have high flow because we want to remove all of it and low feather because we want a nice sharp edge. I'm going to make the brush a little bit smaller. And we're just going to click, shift, click our way around. Click, shift, click, shift, click, shift, click. And just work our way around the bottom of the lantern there. There we go. Make the brush bigger using the square brackets to the left of the uh, return key and yeah, it's nice and quick you can you can be quite swift when you're doing this you're going to right click on this one duplicate it so uh, just going to select that there we go select can make that small for the lamp inside the lantern like we did on the other one and i'm just going to uh, bring that one back it's a bit too bright that one now you'll see that that line is actually being illuminated. So if we go back to the previous mask, uh, what we can do is go back into uh, to the brush, the removal brush, take a small brush, just the size of the line of the, the frame there, and we can click and shift click just to uh, 
just to make that line a little bit darker. That's a bit big, that one, so I'm just going to undo that. And we're going to zoom in a little bit closer. Space bar to move. And then we can do the same thing again. So just, there we go. We just take that the right size. And it's a click, shift, click, just to get around that, uh, that edge. Okay, that's good. So let's just back out. So light on the wall, remember. So we're going to create another radial gradient. We're going to pop that over here. Remember where the frame is, where the light is, that's where it needs to go. I'm just going to come out a bit further with that. We're going to light that up, bring that up so it looks about right. Add the color to balance the color off with the magenta to get rid of that green hue. That works quite well. A little bit bright. Just going to back the amount off, total amount off slightly. A little bit less on the, uh, on the exposure. However, that wall over there would not be illuminated by this light. It's quite a long way away from there, it would not be as bright. So we're going to subtract a brush. We're going to take a zero feather and we're going to take maximum flow. We're going to take a brush in here, come along that edge, click, and then shift click because we're subtracting, remember, from that edge. There we go. And I can just paint out away, make sure it's not there. Hover over the mask to see where we are. A little bit showing up top there. There we go. So we've got the light on that corner. There will be a little bit of a glow over here. So what we can do is we can take this, this one here. No, I'm going to make another one, create another radial gradient. I'm going to just pop it over there. Very subtle on that wall over there, just a little bit of light. There we go. Add in that little bit of color and that magenta. You need the magenta. There we go, a bit of light there. So. Light on the ground, that's the next thing we need to do. So I'm going to create another radial gradient here, pop it on the ground like we talked about, just change the angle so it matches that angle up there, put it underneath the lantern itself. It's going to be around about there. And uh, we're going to bring up the brightness just till it feels about right. I think about there, that little bit of color, that little bit of magenta in there. And remember, pop in the uh, little bit of clarity there just to make that pop nicely down there. Don't want it quite so bright over here. So we can subtract a brush and uh, make sure the brush has 100% uh, feather and uh, about 50% flow. And just lift that down slightly from down there. There we go. Now remember, there's, we, on the other one, we want a little bit more light here. So I'm just going to go back into this one here. I'm going to add a brush. Uh, with that 100% feather and just bring in a little bit more. There we go, along that edge. That's looking nice. Cross over to this lantern in the distance there. The last one we're going to do, I'm just going to speed up the video, but I'm going to use the same techniques. Okay, so that one's done. I'm just going to brighten these lights up a little bit here. So I'm just going to still use the, uh, the the positive brush that I was using over there and just, just going to build up a bit more light so that they sparkle just a little bit more on those. There we go. Add in that little bit of um, clarity. Let's just find clarity. There it is. Just make them pop a little bit. There is a little lantern here. I think we should like that as well. So I'm just going to create a new radial gradient here. Now I'm not going to do the full surround here. I'm just going to pull that down over it and just bring it up, its brightness up like so. Add in that little bit of color just to probably a little bit more color still. Yeah, I'm, I am going to subtract a brush from this one because I see it sticking out the bottom. So I'm just going to put that along there like so. So we just, uh, just tidy up that edge there. And we're just going to take, um, add a brush, 100% feather, low flow, and just build up a bit of, a bit of, a bit of light on the wall there, just to show that it's, it's sort of lit, lit up around there, and a little bit down here as well. And uh, that's looking pretty good. A little bit on those flowers there, on the plants, just make sure they're nice and bright. And there's one over there. I can see that one as well. I'm just going to use this, this positive brush just to bring that one alive as well. 
So just going over that a few times. A little bit of light on the wall. So that's uh, that's fine. I might even brighten that just a little bit more. Just create one more radial gradient over here. Just pick up that area. Bring up the brightness there. Bring up the highlights. Make that pop a little bit. That looks fine. OK, let's go back to fit and uh, let's just have a look. Turn the, them off. Right. So got nice, nice light there. I think this one needs to be a little bit more diffused, Need a little bit more diffusion around there. So I've just clicked on that. I'm going to add another brush, 100% um, feather, quite low flow. And I'm just going to take a slightly bigger brush and just diffuse it out still further. Just just gently bring it out. A little bit further so you don't have that hard edge remember i was talking earlier that people tend to have quite hard edges to their light and that's the way that you can do that you can just add in uh, an additional additional light there so now i think to finish this off we just need to sort out this sky we need a little bit more brightness up there so create a mask take a radial we're just going to pop in a radial gradient here coming across it the angle let's see how we can get it in there just going to brighten that up so just going to bring that up so it's actually it's actually you know like the sun's almost there a little bit of highlight as well just to just to make it really pop there we go that looks nice i'm going to pop in a bit of a little bit of contrast but i'm also going to add in uh, some clarity into that sky there there we go now that is overlapping here and it is lighting up this uh, bell tower as well so to do that to stop it doing that, what we do is go to that mask, go to the three little dots to the right, and we intersect with the sky select. So therefore, it only does the sky, it takes the other areas away. So if I hover over that now, you will see that it's not affecting the uh, the, t the bell tower. That's still nice, nice and dark. So just going to make sure that that is bright enough. Come up a little bit more. That works quite well, but a bit more contrast. There we go. So just to finish this image off, I think we're going to need to just darken down the top um, and the bottom. So I'm just going to go into another mask, take a linear gradient this time, just pull it slightly from the top like so and darken that down just at the top. Not too much because we'll put in a post crop vignette in a minute. We'll do the same at the bottom. We'll create another linear gradient and we'll just come up from the bottom, cutting over slightly this way. So just darken that down a little bit as well. Not too much. And then I think we will go down and pop in a post crop vignette. So we're going to come out of the masks. We're going to go down to the bottom here to effects. We're going to go to the post crop vignette, highlight priority, and just drop that down. Now you might think, oh, wow, that's a bit too much. It's like a big tunnel now. But whenever you reduce your uh, highlight priorities in a post crop vignette, go straight down to the feather slider and just open the, the slider right up. It really opens the whole thing up. I'm just going to back off just a little bit. There we go. Now, just to finish the image off, we just need to balance the lighting and the blacks and the whites to finish this off. So I'm actually thinking here this actually does need to be a little bit brighter. Not too much. There we go. Just going to bring up the shadows just a little bit more again not too much i'm going to go to the white slider hold down the optional alt key so i can move this and you can see where i get the white that is where we've we effectively have gone beyond the rounds we're clipping so i don't want the sky to clip which is the red bit over to the right but i'm happy for the center of the lanterns to to clip so i'm going to go there at minus 11. i'm going to go to the blacks and hold down the blacks and you can see there's a little bit of black already showing if i go down further you'll see there's more black showing just want a little bit of black showing like that. So I'm going to go about plus 24 and uh, you get a nice contrast in the scene. I think we do need to add a little bit more contrast to the scene and just brighten up just a little bit more. And then what I am going to do is uh, add in um, some clarity just to make the whole scene pop just a little bit, not too much. A little bit of texture, two or three points, just to give us more detail around these sort of areas. I'm looking, still looking at it. I'm going to come up on the on the contrast just a little bit more. And uh, I'm going to say, yeah, you know what? I'm happy. Maybe this area up here needs to be just a little bit darker. So let's drop back into the, the mask, grab a, a linear gradient, pull it from the top corner down like this. 
and then just back down that exposure up 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 to that top left just a little bit i'm going to come down about about one stop and i want this last little bit up here to be very dark so i'm going to just create one more linear gradient here it is and i'm just going to pull that one just from that top corner there and just darken that down a little bit more as well so it sort of draws you into the image if you like yeah, I think I'm just going to come out of masks. I think full screen. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So that's just sort of traditional day to night, lighting up existing lanterns that are already illuminated and then illuminating other lanterns just to get more effect. When you do look at it in full full screen, as we are now, you can see, you know, if there's anything else that you need to look at. And I think this lantern here is just slightly too bright. This one's correct. That one's OK, maybe slightly bright, but this one's definitely too bright. So I'm just going to come back, back out of full screen. We'll go back into into the mask there, find out which one that was. Well, that the lan lantern was six copies, so six must be the lantern itself. So I select six and I just bring the brightness down slightly. There we go. Same with this one. I can click on that one. The lantern will be the copy. The lamp will be the copy. The lantern will be the mask below and just back that one off as well. There we go. That works really really well so um i gotta say i'm i'm very happy with that so i'm gonna say that's finished so i hope you enjoyed that uh, great great fun i do, do do enjoy doing a little bit of day tonight and uh if you did enjoy it click like and uh if you if you uh have the time leave me a comment or ask questions and if you've got any good tips always welcome to uh to read those and if you haven't already subscribed then please subscribe and uh, join me on on this adventure here on YouTube, having great fun still. So uh, for now, I'm going to say bye bye.